Uh, today, we have with us an engineer who typifies that American capability of converting great ideas into operating mechanisms that can then be turned over, as it were, to the man in the street for safe and proper uh, use and applications. Only Professor John Trump, who is with us today, did not stop there. Now, when you uh, went to MIT, I believe your original intentions, if they may be so described, was to go into uh, electric power types of applications. Is that right? That's right. I had become interested in the design of electric power machinery. And he has some wild ideas. But I've, a, I've checked a few of them, and they stood up. For six weeks, I decided they they were plausible and reasonable, and I abandoned uh, the design of electric machinery and uh, began studying uh, the insulation of high voltages in vacuum and the acceleration of heavy particles to high energies. Nuclear is so powerful. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago, the power, and that was 35 years ago. He would explain the power of what's going to happen, and he was right. Who would have thought? Acceleration of heavy particles to high energies. Top searches, particle accelerators. So I decided they they were plausible and reasonable, and I abandoned uh, the design of electric machinery and uh, began studying uh, the insulation of high voltages in vacuum and the acceleration of heavy particles to high energies. Particle accelerators are the closest things we have to time machines. Physicist Stephen Hawking wrote an article explaining how it might be possible to travel through time. We would just need a particle accelerator large enough to accelerate humans the way we accelerate particles. A person accelerator with the capabilities of the Large Hadron Collider would move its passengers at close to the speed of light. So we have a direct connection to John Trump overseeing Tesla's files and work. We also have a direct connection of him abandoning his work after to study some of those findings in particle acceleration. We have a direct connection to people like Stephen Hawking saying time travel can be possible with particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider, CERN. Trump's uncle, John G. Trump, was an MIT physics professor, and when Tesla died, he was charged with inspecting some of Tesla's writings on behalf of the FBI. Together with Robert J. Van de Graaff, John G. Trump developed one of the first million-volt X-ray generators. Robert Van de Graaff was an American engineer physicist and noted for his design and construction of high voltage Van de Graaff generators. Van de Graaff particle accelerators. A connection with particle accelerator. In 1946, John Trump co founded the High Voltage Engineering Corporation with Van de Graaff and British electrical engineer Dennis Robinson. John Trump, right, founded the High Voltage Engineering Corporation with Robert Van de Graaff, left, and Dennis Robinson. So after reading Tesla's work, John Trump abandoned his own and took a higher interest in particle acceleration and worked with someone who made a particle accelerator, and it's been linked by Stephen Hawking to being the closest thing we have to time travel. So add the 1893 and 1896 books to this equation. The Bear and Trump novels are children's novels written in 1893 and 1896 by the American author and lawyer Ingersoll Lockwood. Also, Trump has a son named Bear and Trump. Bear and Trump book and Bear and Trump. The book from 1893 is called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey and is about a boy named Baron Trump that found a secret portal and time traveled. Yes, time traveled. In the book, Baron Trump's mentor was called Don. In, 
In 1896, Ingersoll Lockwood wrote another one after Baron Trump book called The Last President. Here's where it gets even weirder. The book is about a very wealthy man who lived in New York on Fifth Avenue and runs for president but wasn't expected to win. Trump Tower is on Fifth Avenue in New York. In the book, when he won, it surprised everyone. People started rioting and protesting. Remember, this was written in the 1800s. But anyways, after his inauguration, he started picking people for his cabinet. In the book, someone has the name Pence. Mike Pence. Sounds oddly familiar. So late 1800s books, Baron Trump and the Last President. Remember, Tesla claimed to have a time machine and time travel. Get this, Lockwood and Tesla both lived in New York at the same time. The opening cover of the book shows Ingersoll at the age of 30 and also at the age of 60, where it says under his name, author and originator of the cult of the immortal human. And funny enough, his picture doesn't look like he aged a day. This is back before the age of cosmetic surgery. The only difference is the color of his beard hair. Did Ingersoll find the secret to life? The book talks about the creation of a god. How to make your own god. And he goes into myths about Muhammad, Osiris, Apis, Horus. He talks about Enoch and Elijah. And how they never saw death. And how they were snatched up from this earth as mortals. He writes poems in this book of the immortal human. To the grand and noble soul of my brother Henry Clay Lockwood. He was famously known to be friends with Sir Henry Clay. The tone of this book is almost educational with a flair of mysticism. Compared to his fiction books and his prophetical, almost political book, this is a far stretch comparatively. Did Mr. Lockwood form a cult back then? We could see now looking back that he had an extensive insight into future events, into the political landscape a hundred years down the line, and into fantastical ideas like Hollow Earth and other topics like time travel. A hundred years later, with the election of Donald Trump, the books of Ingersoll Lockwood are now coming back to bring us an eerie take from the past, almost like Nostradamus has done. Modern Hotel is a huge machine, a glimpse at the mechanical servants that perform superhuman tasks hidden from the sight of guests. New, Yorker, New Yorker's 43-storied hotel, the highest in the world above the street and the deepest below. The Capone's superhuman servants, unseen by the guests. They are buried mostly in four underground floors. exploring the forgotten artifacts of the New Yorker Hotel. We ended up at around 80 feet below the sidewalk at the remnants of the New Yorker's private power plant, a vast undertaking. The DC generating plant was the largest private one of its kind when it was built in 1929. It was powerful enough to provide electricity for a city of 35,000 people. The motors were controlled by a 60-foot switchboard. This power plant was so remarkable that's that the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers designated the New Yorker Hotel as a milestone in electrical engineering on par with the Niagara Falls hydroelectric plant. The old power plant in the basement could generate enough electricity for a small town. Tesla lived here. Tell me he didn't have a hand in this generator power plant that could ge generate enough electricity for a small town. 
Tesla chose the hotel because it was the most technically sophisticated of its time. While a guest there, he would go downstairs to spend time with the generator's engineers and Kenny speculates, tinker with the plant. History Channel prov proved Tesla was down there all the time tinkering with things, so not speculation anymore. I can't show that clip because YouTube took it down, but click the link below. John Trump, Donald Trump's uncle, gets Tesla's work. Particle accelerator direct link. Particle accelerator closest thing to time travel. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago. The power, and that was 35 years ago. He would explain the power of what's going to happen, and he was right. Who would have thought? He would explain the power of what's going to happen, and he was right. Who would have thought?